Okay, good day. So, in this video, so we will be dealing with um, the language of mathematics and its symbols. Okay, so before we proceed to the discussion, so let me give you the lesson objectives. So, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to, first, is to explain why mathematics is considered a language. Second, is to recognize mathematical symbols and their meaning. Third, is to discuss the language, symbols, and conventions of mathematics. And lastly, translate is to translate verbal statements into mathematical statements and vice versa. Okay, so let's proceed to the lesson proper. So, let us first have language or the definition of language. So, a language may be a system of words or codes used within a discipline. So, the language may refer to a system of communication using symbols or sound. There is a linguist named Noam Komsky defined language as a set of sentences constructed using finite, finite set of elements. And some, according to some linguists, they believe that language should be able to represent events and abstract concepts. So that is uh, some of the basic definition of language. So let us proceed to the components or the main components of language. So first, there must be a vocabulary of words or symbols. So meaning to say, a language should be composed of several lists of words. Uh, but not just words. Words with meaning. So meaning must be attached to the words or symbols. Okay, so after that, so we have a language employs grammar, which is a set of rules that uh, outline how vocabulary is used. And then, a syntax word that organizes symbols into linear structures or proposition. Okay, so it is the proper arrangement of words that is... Uh, it is the proper arrangement of words wherein uh, the words can um, com uh, formulate a, com a complete thought or complete meaning. And then, a narrative or discourse consists of strings or of syntactic uh, proposition. So, it is the composition or it is the the compilation of uh, syntax or statements that forms a narrative. So these co uh, basic components will not be meaningful if there's no people or individuals who are going to use and understand these symbols, of course. Language is useless if there's no one uh, who are going to use this uh, language or these components of language. So, so again, so we have the vocabulary of words, the meaning of words, the grammar, syntax, narrative, and the people or individual who are going to use and understand these symbols. Okay, so let's proceed to the language of mathematics. So in language of mathematics, so let us first deal with mathematical expressions. Okay, so mathematical expression is a name given to some mathematical object of interest. So this object of interest may be uh, a number, a set, or a function. Okay, so I know that you are very familiar with this thing. So a number or real numbers. So a set, set of objects or real numbers, a function that can be a mathematical object of interest. So let's say for example we have the counting numbers 1, 2, 3. So some of the uh, English alphabet letters, Greek alphabet letters, uh, whether it is capitalized or not. So these symbols or this object of interest may be used as our mathematical expressions. Okay, so let's say for example we have here 5. 5, 2 plus 3, 10 divided by 2. 6 minus 2 plus 1, or the quantity 6 minus 2 plus 1, and then 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, they might be look different. But actually, these expressions 
is uh, considered as different names of one number. So if you are going to evaluate 2 plus 3, that will be 5. If you are going to evaluate 10 divided by 2, that is also 5. And then the quantity 6 minus 2 plus 1, that will also be 5. 6 minus 2, that is 4. And then add 1, that is 5. And then 1 plus itself 5 times, that is also 5. So these are some basic examples of expression or mathematical expressions. Okay, so let's continue. So what uh, next is mathematical sentence. So what is a mathematical sentence? So a mathematical sentence is the analog of an English sentence. It is a correct arrangement of mathematical symbols that states a complete thought. Okay, so just like English sentences, so English sentences could, should be composed or should be or should have a complete thought for it to be considered as a sentence. So just like in mathematics, so a mathematical statement should also contain a complete thought. Okay, so for example, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So it is, a, it is a mathematical statement with a complete thought, wherein it is uh, pertaining to the addition of 1 and 3 that is equal to 3. So just like x minus y is equal to negative y plus x. And then we have the quantity 4 plus 7 is equal to 11. Okay, so moving on. So if you want to learn more about mathematical sentences, you can visit this uh, site. Is math a language? So that is the title of the video included in this YouTube link. Okay, so let's continue. So truth of sentences. So what is truth of sentences? A mathematical sentence should show relationship of different expressions. Of different expressions, thus you can determine whether they are true or false. Okay. So the notion of truth of fundamental importance in the mathematical language. An expression does not think a complete thought, thus it does not make sense to ask if an expression is true or false. So later on, so we'll be uh, having examples. Okay, so examples of truth of sentences. So identifying if the following are true or false. For number one, so we have the sum of a number and three. So the sum of a number and three. So in this case, this is not considered as a mathematical statement. So this is only an expression. So therefore, this does not mean it is true or false. Okay? So x plus 3 or the number the sum of a number and 3 can be represented in mathematical statement as x plus 3 and then we have the answer is neither true nor false or number 2 so we have 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 okay so is this statement true or false so of course this statement is true okay so let's continue Example number 3, 1 multiplied to x is equal to x. Is this statement true? So, any value that is substituted to the variable x will still make the sentence true. Okay? So, if we use 3 as the value of x, so 1 times 3 is equal to 3. So, that is true. So, if you use 10, 1 times 10 is equal to 10. That is still true. So, therefore, the answer for number 3 is true. Okay. So, let's have example number 4. x minus 1 is equal to x. Is this statement true? So, any value of x will still make the sentence false. Why? So, if we use... Let's try to use 3 again. So, x will be equal to 3. So, let's try. So, 3 minus 1, that is equal to 2. Wherein, as you can see, hindi po equal yung ating values of x. So, let us use 10. So, 10 
minus 1 is 9. Is 9. So, in Okay, so we're in 10 and 9 is not equal. So therefore, this statement is this statement is false. Okay, so let's have more examples. So, let's have example number 5. 5y plus, uh, 3y plus 5 equals 14. Okay, so, if y is equal to 3, then it is true. Otherwise, it's false. So, the answer for this one is conditionally true. So, therefore, if the value of y is 3, so the statement is true. But what if the value of y is 4? So, the val the statement is now false so let's try so if y is equal to 4 so it will be 3 times 4 plus 5 equals 14 wherein if we combine 3 multiplied by 4 that is 12 and then plus 5 that is already equal to 17 which is false to the given statement so this is conditionally true okay so only one specific value is uh, needed for this for this statement to become true so let's have example number six this statement is false if this statement is true then it would have to be false if this statement is false then it would have to be true okay so in this statement we need to identify if the statement is true so if this statement is true then it would be false if this statement is false then it would be true okay so the answer for number six it is not true it is not false whether nor conditionally true okay so for let's continue so mathematical symbols so mathematical symbols so we have mathematical nouns mathematical verbs, basic mathematical operations, and other mathematical symbols. Okay, so what are mathematical nouns? So mathematical nouns refers to numbers or values that are manipulated in a mathematical sentence. So again, so mathematical nouns refers to numbers or values that are manipulated in a mathematical sentence. For example, variables. So, these are symbols or letters that may have one or more possible values. Next, we have constants. So, these are numbers with fixed values. So, like Hindu-Arabic numerals. So, another thing is to is mathematical constant. So, these are symbols that have exact numerical value. So, these are the examples of mathematical nouns. So, first we have the Hindu Arabic numerals, so which is constants or constant terms. So, they have specific values or uh, certain values. So, these Hindu Arabic numerals are called digits which can form numbers. Based from our example, so we have 523 and 10.537. So, those are examples of Hindu-Arabic numerals combined to form numbers. Next, we have the English alphabet letters. So, I know that you are familiar with English alphabet letters. So, these are variables. So, variables is said to have an unknown value. So, okay. So, variables is used to represent an unknown value. So, variables can be seen in our example. So, wherein we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared or y is equals to mx plus b. 
So next is the Greek alphabet letters can be also used as a or as variables. So wherein it can also represent an unknown value. Okay, so it will it is used in our examples. So some Greek and English letters. So these English or Greek letters are mathematical constants. Okay, so symbols with fixed values. Okay, so for example, the imaginary number, which is equal to square root of negative 1. And then we have the Euler's number, which has an approximate value of 2.718. We have pi, with, ha uh, with uh, an approximate value of 3. 1416 and then we have the golden ratio with uh, approximate value of 1.618 okay so continuing so we have mathematical verbs so mathematical verbs are symbols that shows the relationship of at least two expressions so just like in english or english sentences so we all know that verbs represents action word so action word so two expressions are either equal or unequal so these mathematical verbs can express or can show that two expression are either equal or unequal and then these mathematical verbs can also show if they are unequal then one expression is greater than or less than the other value okay so let's have some examples of mathematical verbs so we have equal sign of course used for equality of two given expressions so 5 and 2 plus 3 that is equal so we have the not equal sign of course used for inequality or inequality uh, of two numbers or two digits two symbols and then we have the approximately equal sign of course used for approximation greater than and less than sign so for strict inequality so 5 is greater than 4 while 4 is less than 5 and then greater than or equal to and less than or equal to used for inequality so 5 is less than is greater than or equal to 4 and 4 is less than or equal to 5. So those are the mathematical verbs. So next, we have basic mathematical operations. So I know that you are already familiar with the uh, four fundamental, fundamental operations, which is considered as the basic mathematical operations. So we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So let's have some of the basic symbols used for mathematical operations. So we have the plus sign, of course, for addition, the minus sign for subtraction, the plus minus and minus plus sign, both plus and minus operations, both minus and plus operations. So this is our examples. So we have the time sign or the and the multiplication that, of course, used for multiplication. Okay, so we can use either of the two and then we have the division sign or the obelus, the sla division slash and the horizontal line all used for division. So the last one is for fraction. So this is our examples. Okay, so let's continue. So other mathematical symbols. So other mathematical symbols include group grouping symbols which are used to indicate order of operations, exponents, and radicals, and miscellaneous symbols such as decimal point and percent. So I know that you are familiar of some of these mathematical symbols. So parentheses, so if you are familiar with PEMDAS, so we are, uh, we usually use parentheses in uh, evaluating integers. So just like for this Example. So, calculate expressions inside the parentheses first. So, of course, so we are going to first evaluate 3 plus 5 and then multiply it to 1 and then it will be equal to 16. And then we use brackets. So, just like the parentheses, 
it is used to calculate the expression inside the brackets. And then we have the period or the decimal point and decimal separators. So 2.56 is equal to 2 plus 56 over 100. And then we have the power or the exponent. So it is used to indicate how many times we are going to multiply the base to itself to itself so it is for example 2 raised to 3 so we are going to multiply 2 times itself 3 times so 2 times 2 times 2 so which is 2 times 2 that is 4 and then 4 times 2 that is equal to 8 okay so the next is the nth root or radical so indicate the root that a root is being taken so square root of 9, that is 3. Square, uh, cube root of 125, that is 5. And then we have the percent symbol. So 1% is equal to 1 over 100. So 10% of 30 is equal to 3. Okay, so let's continue. So mathematical symbols, if you want to learn more about mathematical symbols, so you can visit this YouTube link where in Word Do Math symbols come from so that's the title of the video that is encrypted in this youtube link so let's proceed to translating english sentences to mathematical sentences and vice versa so before that so let us consider this uh, phrases or words that might be seen in a mathematical sentence so of course for addition so we have the word plus more than increased by the sum of the total of added to for subtraction so we have minus less less than decreased by the difference of subtracted from for multiplication so we have times multiplied by the product of twice or thrice and then for division so we have divided by the ratio of the quotient of for equality, so we have is equals, is equal to, gives. And then for inequality, so we have is greater than, is less than, is at least, is at most, is above, and is below. So those are some of the basic or some of the words or phrases that might be seen in a mathematical statement. Okay, so let's have other phrases to consider in uh, mathematical statements so we have the quantity so when we say the quantity so we can have the quantity for example the quantity of x plus 1 is equal to 2 is equal to 2 so this is the quantity so it is enclosed in a parenthesis so next we have square so when we say square, so it is mentioned earlier in other mathematical symbols. So we have the square, so it means exponent. So for example, a number raised to 2, or the square of a number. Okay? So the square of a number, so for example, is x squared. Okay, so the square of 10, so that is... 10 squared. Okay, next cube. The cube of a number. So that is, for example, x cube or the cube of 10. So that is 10 raised to 3 or 10 cube. And then raised to n power. So n power means we can use any uh, number to be an exponent. So uh, n power or exponent are used again to multiply a number by itself on how many times it is indicated okay so next is the square root okay so square root and cube root so square root for example the square root of a number square root of x the square root of 2 so square root of 2 for example the cube root of y so the cube root of y or the cube root of 27 and then we have the nth root so it is the index so pwede natin palitan ko ano yung 
gagamitin natin yung index. So, pwedeng the fourth root, the fifth root, the seventh root, the tenth root, and etc. Okay, so let's have several examples of translating verbal sentences into mathematical sentences. So, first, <clears throat> the sum of a number x and 24 is 44. So, it indicates addition. So, the sum of a number x of a number x and 24 is 44. So that is how we how you will write this verbal sentence into mathematical sentence. Okay, so so that will be the solution. Let's have number two. Five less a number is greater than twelve. 5 less a number is greater than 12. So, 5 less, so 5 less a number. So, for example, we use the variable B because the number is not stated unlike in number 1, the number X. So, in number 2, so we have a number only. So, we can use any variable to represent that number. So, 5 less a number is greater than 12 is greater than 12 okay so that is for number 2 so 5 less a number is greater than 12 so next example number 3 4 times a number y less less than 12 is less than 10 so you might be confused of this example. So, uh, pwede natin sabihin na this is too redundant because of this too less than. But, we can see the difference is less than. So, we can include is less than. So, for this statement. So, 4 times a number y. So, the number is stated. The variable is stated. So, 4 times the number y less than 12 is less than 10. is less than 10. So again, 4 times a number y is uh, 4 times a number y less than 12 is less than 10. Okay, so that is for example number 3. Let's have example number 4. The square of the sum of two numbers is at most 7. So the square of the sum, the square of the sum of two numbers is 7. Okay, so the square So, the square of the sum of two numbers. So, the two numbers is not stated. So, we can use any variable we want. So, for example, we have A and B. So, the square of the sum of two numbers is at most. Pag sinabi natin at most, so, pinakamataas ay 7. So, it should be less than or equal to 7. So, that will be the answer. So, in this uh, solution, so, I use... M and N to represent these two numbers. So the square of the sum of two numbers is at most 7. Is at most 7. So pinakamataas dapat ay 7. Is less than or equal to 7. And then we have example number 5. So the quotient of two numbers is equal to their differences. So the two numbers is again not stated. So we can use any variable we want. So for number 5, so we can use any variable we want because the, cause the two numbers is not stated. So we can use x and y. So the quotient of two numbers... So, the quotient of x and y, 
So, it can be expressed as x over y is equal to their differences. So, x minus y. Okay? So, that will be the answer for number 5. And then, so we have example number 6. So, the product of the squares of the numbers x and y is less than 100. So, the product of the squares. So, squares not x and y is x squared and y squared. And then, we have the product which indicates multiplication. So, we can use the multiplication dot. And then, is less than 100. Or, or we can use x squared. So, we can enclose it in a parenthesis to indicate multiplication. And then, multiplied by y squared is less than 100. So, either of the two can be the answer for number 6. Yeah. Okay? So... Let's uh, do the opposite of the first six examples. So, translate the following mathematical sentences into verbal phrases. So, this time, so mathematical statement yung given natin. And then, we are going to translate it into verbal phrases. So, for number one, so x minus 3 equals the, uh, 2x raised to 2. So, in this uh, example, so we can translate this mathematical sentence as 3 less than a number x is equal to the square of twice the same number. Again, so 3 less than a number x is equal to the square of twice the same number. Okay, let's have example number 2. So, 6y over 3z is greater than 3yz. Again, so 6y over 3z is greater than 3yz. Okay, so for number 2, so we can uh, translate this mathematical sentence into verbal phrases or to verbal statement as uh, the quotient of 6 times a number y and thrice a number z is greater than thrice the number y multiplied by z. So, remember, y is the only variable that is multiplied to 3, not z. So, again, so the quotient of 6 times the number y and thrice the number z is greater than thrice the number y multiplied by z. Okay, so that is example number 2. Let's have number 3. So the quantity a plus b times the quantity a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. Okay, so this uh, mathematical sentence can be expressed as the product of the sum and difference of the numbers a and b is equal to the difference of their squares. Again, so this statement or this mathematical statement can be read as the product of the sum of the sum and difference of the numbers A and B is equal to the difference of the squares of their squares. So that can be read as that. Example number four. So, cube root of 18, x raised to 5, is less than or equal to y over 2. So, this can be translated as the cube root of 18 times the fifth of a number or the cube root of 18, the cube root of 18 times a number raised to 5 is at most is at most the quotient of a number y and 2. So again, so the cube root of 18 
times a number raised to 5 is at most y is at most the quotient of a number y and 2. So that will be the several examples of translating mathematical sentence into verbal phrases. Okay, so if you want to learn more about translating English sentences to mathematical sentences and vice versa, so you can visit this YouTube link or in it is uh, it contains the video on how to read math. Okay, so that would be all for this video. So thank you for listening and watching. So these are my references for this uh, for the content of this video. Okay, so I would like also to thank SlidesGo for letting me use this uh, PowerPoint template. Okay, so if you have any questions, queries, suggestions, recommendations, comments, you can uh, message me in my Facebook account. So that would be all. Goodbye and thank you.